it's always better, Charlie, to have the tricky conversations before you have to have the tough conversations. G'day, I'm Charlie, your online business manager and WordPress expert. My goal is to assist small to medium business owners build their businesses with a focus on using the internet and online technologies in an appropriate and cost-effective manner. People hire me to take the stress out of managing their businesses and allow themselves to focus on what they do best. I have a guest today, which is fantastic. Beth Bergen is a professional coach providing confidential one-on-one -on -one leadership coaching for executives and business owners. Beth coaches individuals and teams in areas of leadership, communication and mental fitness, regularly facilitating large and small group workshops to influence transformation in team communication strategies and behaviours. Her approach to coaching is solutions focused encouraging clients to examine the future and potential solutions rather than analysing historical events and issues. She insists on celebrating every single achievement embedding sex oh my goodness successful behaviors and breeding further <laughs> success look Beth's going to tell us a bit more about herself and we are going to get get into that sort of topic today Beth is actually going to have a chat to us about strategies to develop self-leadership behaviors and mindset which can be easily embedded into your daily routine so Beth thank you so much for agreeing to be a guest and welcome Charlie, thank you so much for having me here today. And, and before we started this call formally, I love the catch up that we had in terms of you focusing and shifting your life to becoming a real live digital nomad. I think that's awesome. And what a great example that sets for your client in terms of, hey, it's possible. Look at me. I'm doing it now. <laughs> And look, thank you so much. And I'm actually going to share a little bit about that shortly with people. Um, just so people know, I've been putting out a camper van for the last couple of weeks, which is a little van that's got a bed and a stove and a fridge in it. And I'm going to go travelling. I'm going to go and drive up the coast of Australia and do my work as I'm as I'm driving along. So I'll do a little bit more on that a bit later. But yeah, I'm excited. Thank you, Beth. Which is wonderful. Yeah, I love that. Would you like to hear some more about me? I would love to hear a little bit more about you. I'm sure okay. my listeners will too. <laughs> um, my name is Beth Bergen. As Charlie said, I work um, around leadership and communication in two main areas. One is that I work um, confidentially one-on-one -on -one with executives and business owners. Um, to work on their leadership and communication skills. And then I also have a, a small hand-picked group of no more than eight to 10 that I work exclusively through in a 10-week program. And that really um, brings together leadership skills, uh, communication skills, and your mental fitness. And so for me, the focus is really all about um, leadership and communication from the inside out and as as you'll hear as Charlie and I go through the conversation for me that it starts with you so all of that leadership all of that communication starts with you uh, in what's usually termed as as self-leadership so that's where we're going to go um, I've been coaching for quite a few years now and I have this huge box of uh, or huge toolkit um, that, that supports my coaching, uh, things like um, NLP and timeline therapy. I'm a master NLP coach. I'm a, I'm a certified happiness coach, which was really awesome to, to actually do. And then went on from that to be a, um, a uh, workshop um, happiness specialist. Um, I'm, I'm also, I also have uh, a lot of other experience and qualifications around mental health, um, first aid, but also around the positive intelligence that informs my mental fitness. So uh, I think a lot of people forget, Charlie, that coaches need coaches. So I have several coaches and I also have a very strong commitment to um, continuing to grow and learn myself because that ultimately serves my clients a whole heap more. 
Um, the final thing that I would say about myself is this, um, I'm really committed to having fun in what I do. So uh, my sessions, although they can be quite confronting at times because we're looking to have breakthroughs and we're looking to, to um, grow and change, there's also a lot of humour and fun in them as well. That sounds look. That sounds amazing, Beth. And um, I've actually done one of your courses. Uh, it was one of your introductory courses in, into what you do, which is how we connected um, through LinkedIn. I think it was initially. Uh, and you've got some wonderful information to share. So let's let's hop on into it because you said a lot of things there that uh, I think people should be interested in. Um, but possibly don't know they should be interested in. Now, one of the things you mentioned there is you know, looking after yourselves and your coaches need coaches and all of those things. But I think that also applies back to your business owners too, is that you're so busy working in your business, you need to be looking after yourselves because if you're not right, the world around you is not right. Um, yeah. My personal experience from it is as soon as I start to get a bit off kilter, everything's wrong everything just my clients aren't happy my clients are always asking me to do things and it's always bad and it's always hard and then once i get myself re-centered it all just flows again now the questions don't change the tone of the messages don't change it's just the way i'm reading them i'm sure mm -hmm. so if you want to have a chat about you know how we can develop self-leadership behaviors what they are to begin with and then how that sort of experience i've had sort of m melds into what you're doing if it does at all yeah um, your experience is ve is very common uh, whether whether you're a, a, a small business owner whatever the role that you have there, there's this um, if, if one area of your life is what what's often referred to as out of balance then then the other area is likely to be out of balance and the, the thing that that your work and your home life have in common is you and that's why in my focus i'll come back to what's going on for you and so in terms of self-leadership it, it begins i believe by recognizing that you have the ability to to reflect and and that reflection must be um, done on a um, doesn't must be that it, it, I recommend it's done on a on a regular basis, and that you adopt an honesty around that reflection, so that you're looking and, and thinking, where am I? What what are my capabilities right now? Am I actually doing too much? Am I trying to do too much? And is that leading to an overwhelm? Because if what we have is an overwhelm at work, no matter how hard you try, you take that home with you. And so now, can I at just home, ask that you said, am I trying to do too much? Is, yeah, am I trying to do too much? What is too much? Now, my experience again on that is that too much varies depending on the time of day, the time of year, um, uh, the way I'm standing. I mean, it just doesn't, it, too much is not a fixed thing in my experience. No, I love that you've picked up on that. The first thing is, I, I totally agree with you, too much is an individual thing. It's a very individual thing and it and it depends on what is going on in the whole rest of your life and where you need your focus to be right now so your version of too much may be only a half of what someone else's think thinks is too much it could just as easily be twice as much as someone else might, might be able to manage so in particular for people who are new um, in jobs or people who are, are small business owners charlie who have recently employed a number of new staff or who are experiencing some growth the key thing is to actually delegate to actually let go of things that 
Now, if you if you're a small business owner and and or, or a medium business owner, there's only you and a couple of other people. You're doing everything. As you bring new staff on, what you have to be prepared to do is to stand back from the role that you might have been doing and allow them to step into that space. Yeah. Now, when I'm working, I've worked with quite a lot of small business owners um, who, who are in exactly this position. Why have I employed this person if I'm tripping over them the entire time? Why have I employed them if I'm still doing it? Why have I employed them? Why am I paying for their wages when they don't do it fast enough? All of those kinds of things. So there's a, there's a mind shift that is required in a small business owner when they start to bring new staff on board. And, and when, I, when I'm working with, um, with uh, small business owners, I draw that up as a triangle. So, you know, here's the line of the growth of the business and the triangle comes out to one side and then back up to meet that line. And this is the small business owner stepping out. And then they're going to go up and grow the business in a different way or grow themselves in a different way. So they meet the line again. And I always color that triangle, that new triangle that we've created, I color that red. And the red space is where we need the new staff to move into. Right? Outside of that triangle, we color it a different color because that's where the business owner needs to be. Yeah, that's where they need to be. And, and a lot of what, um, and this is where that leadership and communication comes into it, that reflection, hey, I'm still doing that thing that I'm paying some staff to do. Um, I'm not letting them actually do what I'm paying them to do. And there's, you know, if we if we, we can flip that even further into a rabbit hole in terms of um, it's real it's really easy to think that people, new people, aren't doing things as well as you need them to because we forget that they're just new at it. They haven't been doing it for five years like we have, so we can do it in our sleep. And, and so there's a whole pattern about, you know, the, the, the uh, four stages of learning that I work through with people. Where, where we look at, well, here, I don't know what I don't know. And then, oh, I do know what I don't know. And that scares me. And and now here I am having to make an effort and, and getting a bit better at it. And then I begin to master it. And, you know, as small business owners or as business owners, as new team leaders, whether we're working for ourselves or, or for um, a large company, we forget to actually lean back and allow people to learn from their mistakes. I can actually just there because you hit a question I was going to ask and you answered it, which was fantastic. Um, but it's such a powerful thing that we forget as business owners is or forget as people. Something that we know how to do and we do really, really well and really, really easily. And we do it really easily because it's something we love doing. Someone else is going to have trouble learning that. Um, and sometimes what you know, you I think you said it, you don't know what you don't know. Like in our case, we don't know what we do know. Um, <laughs> a lot of what we do, and I, I know I trip over this, and this is something that I struggle with all the time because people come to me because I solve problems. I'm a problem solver. I'm a troubleshooter. And people come to me, they're like, this isn't bright, this is broken. And I go, oh, it's there. And someone say, how do you do that? Like, well, I've got 30 odd years experience. I know what I'm looking for. I know the indicators I'm looking for. Now, trying to bring someone else in to learn that and learn that process, it takes them forever because they go through all these painful little steps that I used to do 30 odd years yeah. ago, but I don't do now. And I've forgotten that I do all that. 
until I see someone else doing it. You know, oh, oh yeah, that's what I do. And I forgot to put that in my process. Um, so I think that's a really important thing that people really need to think on. Um, you've got to step back. Um, I like to think, so you take step, step back, take a breath, deep breath, <laughs> close your eyes, <laughs> don't look, <laughs> don't watch, let them do it. Yeah. Um, now, when you when your person that you bring on doesn't do it as well as you would, um, or doesn't get it quite right, or the result isn't quite what what you would expect it to do, what do you do? How do you handle that? I I think that um, it can be handled in a number of different ways, but I, I think that the first thing that that we need to do as individuals is reflect on um, the time and the I'm going to use the word attention, the time and attention that we've given to helping the person learn the new skill. Um, we can often feel as though, Charlie, we've given a lot of time. However, if we weren't fully present, if we weren't giving them the, the you know, our full attention, then we're in the room, we're in the space. However, we're not actually helping them to learn the process that we want them to follow. Um, and and as, as you said, hey, I've got to go right back and start looking at, well, do I need to do some standard operating uh, procedures here? Do I need to develop a process? And for those of us who have been doing it on the fly and built up our skills by making, allowing ourselves to make mistakes and learning from them. Uh, it, it's actually, it's actually not always easy for us to go back and see all the things that need to be done to get us from A to B. And, and I would really encourage if you're not the person to do the training, then find someone who who will do the training. However, don't expect that someone else is going to pick it up as as fast as, as you will. So, you know, I think it also uh, what also feeds into this, Charlie, is that <laughs> how many year, how many times over the years have you seen ads that say, "I want uh, a junior who's had two years' experience" or 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 some variation of that? And I, I a PhD in this with five years practical experience. Yes, yeah. more and more now. Yeah, and and so, you know, there's this expectation that people bring a lot of experience with them, and and that that just because someone's had experience doesn't mean that they're necessarily very good at it. It's kind of like I remember years ago when when I was working uh, with an an employer. And um, we were training, we were, we were working with the employer to, to identify what specific skills they needed for people to come and work in their organisation. And, and we were tailoring, we were looking to tailor it to that organisation or that business. And I loved it. And this has stuck with me for many years because the, the business owner actually said, I'm really comfortable if they come to me with no skills or no experience at all. And I said to him, well, why is that? Like that really flies in the face of what I've heard all over the place. And he said, well, if they come to me with no experience, they don't have bad habits that I have to undo. And I can teach them my bad habits. And, and yep. I think, I think, uh, and particularly right now, when it's a little difficult for us to to um, to find people for jobs, you know, there's a, although there is unemployment, there is a lack of the right people available for for the right things. Um, I think what happens, Shelley, is that we figure that this person is better than no one because we're on this trajectory of I don't want to be overwhelmed. I want to get my business moving forward. I want to take advantage of every opportunity. So I'll put a person in the role. And what then happens is that that person t 
takes up so much of um, of our negative focus because they're not doing it as quickly as we want them to. And so we set up, we, we, set, we actually set them up for failure because we haven't taken that time in the beginning. You know, and that's a real self-leadership thing um, and, and, a, and a really good leadership and communication um, strategy to understand is that, that they're new, they need to be inducted, they need your time they need your focus. Now, if it's a larger business, it might not be your time, but it actually is because you're paying it for it. It is your time. You're paying yeah. for it. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah totally it, agree. It, yeah. So if I can just come back to a couple of your points there before we can move on, because you've got so many great things there. Um, I, I love that you, you said, you know, not only have you spent the time, but have you actually spent the um, energy I uh, have you been present when you're doing the training because that's a really, really big one. Um, one of the things that I think we miss as business owners is that we look at someone and we say, you didn't do that job right. This job was not done right, blah, 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 rather than, hey, listen, you did a fantastic job. What you did was great. Here's some hints and here's some tips on how you might make it better and here's the here is the level that I expect now, I don't expect you to get that straight up, but this is what I want you to aim for and here's how I do it. And here's some things that I saw in all of this that I think you might be able to improve on. So why don't we choose one of these things that you can improve on next time? So what, you, what I feel you do at that point is you're praising them for doing the job. The job was done. It just wasn't done to my standard and my standards are way up here. I'm going to say this. I know that. But the job's done. It's done exactly what you want it to do, but it can be better. So let's look at how we improve it. And I think that's a really good way for business owners and anyone who's uh, in a training and leadership role to actually approach things. What do you think? It's always better, Charlie, to have the tricky conversations before you have to have the tough conversations. If they're not doing it, the way you want it to be done. Have that conversation early in a positive way as you've identified rather than letting it build up, build up, build up. They keep thinking they're doing okay or they keep thinking, I hate this damn job. Why am I even here? Like I can't get anything right. Whatever they're thinking, it's always more awkward when you have to have that really tough conversation. Right. So back here, make sure start by making sure that you're spending that time and that and that energy, that focus, that attention, so that they understand what's happening. Lower your own expectations so that you understand that they're not going to go from zero to twenty plus years of experience in two and a half hours or even two and a half weeks, or even two and a half months necessarily. You're moving them and building their competence and their confidence. And as you do that, it's awesome to give them the positive feedback. It's also awesome taking the emotion out of it to talk to them about how they can yes. do better. You know, like we're, we're really, and if, if what you do is learn to have those tricky, what I call tricky conversations, which is saying the negative things positively, you know, it's that simple, saying the negative things positively. If you have that tricky conversation and give that positive feedback, then that will save you getting into an absolute dilemma about how do I manage this from an HR perspective? What happens if they go to work cover? What am I going to do? I hate them. I don't want them here. And, and actually getting yourself into a bind and a situation that is going to impact on all areas of your life and all areas of your work. Learning to have the little tricky conversations will sort that out. 
I, look, I, I agree, and that's been that has been my experience. Yeah, I've I've been in situations where I've come in, I've gone, this isn't right. You haven't done this. You haven't done that. And when when I've stepped back, on you know they got it. They got the job done. It wasn't done well, but it was done. The client doesn't know any bloody different. <laughs> The client might say to me, oh, we missed having you because, you know, we didn't get your extra bits on. I'm like, that's okay, they'll learn that. Um, but if I step back and go, it was really unfair on them because they've come into a situation where they've got someone very, very experienced. They're trying to step into their shoes on. Their standards, my standards are right up here. I know that. <laughs> I know that I have trouble meeting my own standards sometimes. Uh, and I find that I actually get really long term not just employees but subcontractors and business partners and people who work with my business because they know when they come to me i'm just going to be chill about it really and, I, and they'll, they'll learn something as they go because one of the things i like to do is teach as i go which then comes to the second point that you made in all of that when you were talking to that gentleman who said they'd employ rather employ someone with no skills um, because they learn their bad habits. That is something that I've employed in, I don't know, I can't even remember when I learned. I think I learned it when I was in my 20s when we were trying to employ a tech to fill a role that we had. And it was a very specific technical set of skills we needed. And I think we had been through three different techs and I got a new branch manager and my branch manager said, stop, stop employing for the skills. And I looked at him and I said, what do you mean? He said, we want someone who can come in and fit as part of the team that can learn those skills. Skills can be taught. The things that are hard to teach is the ability to fit into a team, the culture fit, the ability to learn. If someone, it's hard to teach someone to learn. If they can learn, they can learn these skills. Let's start employing for this set of things and forget about this set of things. And you know what? The next guy I got on, they were a five-year employee. They, they stayed with us for five years. It was fantastic. I love um, that, Charlie. It's, a, it's, it's an experience that I've had a number of times myself. Uh, if, if what we were doing, the example I often use when I'm talking to people is this. If, 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 you, if you owned a 24-hour service station, and you were looking for someone to cover the midnight shift, what would be the most important thing? That they can work the midnight shift, that they can work midnight to whenever and they're going to be present at that time. That they turn up. Right. You know, and, and people kind of go, really? That's the most important you say you go, yeah, they have You would to be, be surprised the number of people that don't do that. They go, oh, we want someone to fit the midnight shift. This person's perfect, but they can only work nine till five. Well, we'll put them on the midnight shift. They yeah. didn't turn up to their shift. That's Why it. not? <laughs> and if they don't turn up, who has to go? I'm the business owner. Me. I need to go. Yeah. And so but what what you what what's really important taking out of the comments that you've made is that when you're looking for someone you think about their potential now obviously if what you're doing is employing someone who comes with a, a clear set of you know if, if you're looking for a new accountant then then there's 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 a whole skill set that might need to slot perfectly into that job. If you're looking for a new tech person, if you're looking for a new mechanic yep. or whatever, they're, they're, that's different from bringing someone on and, and training them in additional skills. It's the attitude, it's, it's their mindset, it's their leadership and communication skills that are, that are going to have them fit into your team really beautifully. And that's why all the time, you know, I come back to it's leadership and communication from the inside out because it starts with me. It starts with me. If I can see that there is potential in someone, then I, I'm seeing something that perhaps they're not even aware of. And so as an employer, my gift to them is to skill them up, but also to really be complimenting them and highlighting their leadership and their communication skills and allowing those to grow. Allowing those to grow. Self-discipline is a self-leadership skill. 
getting there at midnight and having the commitment to be there on time that that that's self leadership that self discipline i can't teach that see okay now you've just made the penny drop on that yep yes you can't teach they that bring, they, they bring it with them they bring it with them um the way that that um the the, the level of respect that that uh, people it's have for each other in the workplace i i can legislate around it i can tell them that they can't have biases and they can't discriminate here and they can't do this and they can't do that if that individual's values see that differently i can help to um i can help to implement the law but i can't teach them I can't teach them that. I can, however, teach them how to how to uh, use use the respond to a telephone call uh, in a way that that I want for my business. I can, however, um, teach them a range of of other things that I, I can teach them how to use a cash register. I can teach them how to respond to an email. I can teach them how to use a specific piece of equipment and that can get more and more and more technical i can teach them how i want them to interact with my clients and they're the things that i can measure them on if, if they don't come with some of those other mindsets and attitudes nothing i can do and I think the thing to remember there is that the mindset and attitude that you're looking for differs. It differs from my business to your business. It differs yeah. to someone else's business. We don't always employ the same people. In fact, we're not always looking. We don't want the same people. Our businesses are all different. We all have our own personalities within our own businesses. Um, and as a business owner, it's really important that you know the type of person, not just what the skill set is, but the type of person you're looking to bring on to, to fill a role. Um, mm -hmm. Me, just as an example for myself, I know that I want people that can show initiative, that have a lot of high self-initiative, yep. that will look at an email in my inbox, in, in our shared inbox and go, that's an email that I can action. What I'm going to do is just put a note out to the team that says, I've got this one, I'm working on it, here's what I'm doing and I'll be back to you in five minutes about, yeah. or 10 minutes or five, whatever, when I know what we're doing and if I've got questions, I'll ask. Um, which then also, that's the next thing that I wanted to ask you about is, um, I, I always use the view, the, the, the statement, there's no such thing as a dumb question, just really stupid mistakes. Um, and then i follow that up with but mistakes are okay as long as you only make them once okay maybe i'll give you twice <laughs> you're making the same mistake again we're going to have words um that that's another thing that business owners need to learn isn't it and just leaders in general need to learn isn't it um done is a hundred percent better than perfect uh, because you can go back and and fix something up uh the best I, I think that I think that that leaders and business owners could not not could they would gain a lot from understanding that there are massive learnings in mistakes. Uh, every you know there are there are massive learnings in in mistakes. Um, I was doing something recently uh, where an error that I made resulted uh, in a person being completely cut out of what we were doing and and the first thing was that people were astounded about was that I put my hand up and said well I must have done that now I wasn't sure but I was pretty sure that my action had, had created that and so there were a lot of people kind of going really you put your hand up you're prepared to acknowledge that well yeah why not so that was the first thing. I owned my error. What it then meant was that we were able to scramble to figure out how to give them access again. And we learned some amazing things. We got them access. And what we now know 
as a result of the error is if that was to happen again, this is how we would solve it. So what yep. might have been a bit of blind panic over here was made a whole lot of easier because when someone owns the, the error, you stop trying to find out who to blame. <laughs> you stop trying to find out, uh, you know, uh, you stop that emotional thing and you then are able to focus on sorting it out as opposed to, um, oh, I don't know who did that. Why, why did that happen? And so we now know how to do it. Uh, what I notice, <coughs> excuse me, what I notice is that an awful lot of us take that emotional, go, go, allow ourselves to go down that emotional journey of going, who, why, how, instead of actually looking at, let's solve it. We, we want to blame. So, and the reason, when, one of the reasons we want to blame is because we want to shift responsibility um, because it couldn't have possibly been us and we just want to shift responsibility. Now, if you step back and take a breath on that one, and again, you'll hear I say that a lot, just take, step, take, take a step back and breathe. What I have found is that um, the reason I want to know who did something is because I want to know what they did that caused it. I don't care that they did it. I don't care that they caused it. What I want to know is what they did to cause it because that then allows me to go back and fix the process and fix the system or say, just don't do that again because this is obviously a problem in the system that we need to avoid. But if we don't know that it's there, how do we know that we need to fix it? So, I, I think, and that's I why think mistakes that, are so wonderful. <laughs> the, 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 the other um, point that I would make is that when you talk about you, 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 in terms of whoever it is who yes. made the mistake, yeah. uh, then, then then that person can often feel like they're being officially blamed for it. When you when when you focus first on this is what's happened, what's the solution? Let's come around to how we can make sure this doesn't happen again later and you focus on the solution, um, that person is less likely to feel as though they're blind. Because depending on on the, the type of mistake that you make, uh, people or the type of mistake that has been made, um, individuals will, will respond to that in different ways. As I said to you, I, I'm putting my hand up and owning it. I did this, yep. And there's a whole lot of people going, really? You know, like you're one of the leaders in this room and you're... Because it, the, That's why I'm a leader. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> That's why I'm it. a leader. Yeah. yeah. I also find um, that thanking people for um, owning up and saying, hey, this is what I did. Hey, listen, thanks for telling me that. That's great. Now what you've done is you've allowed us to move forward. Now, so what then happened this action got taken and this thing happened. So I've taken them out of it. It's no longer them doing it. It was this action. Um, this button got pressed and this is what occurred. How do we fix that? Or how? what do we need to do to rectify it now and put that on the back burner then to come back and yeah. put a, put a long-term fix in place? Yeah. So, so a great self-leadership strategy um, and one that you can just use straight away is actually to own own those those mistakes or, or to own those errors or to own things like um, maybe you're not that awesome at using technology or, or you know if what you do is own what others might see as your weakness it's very difficult if you own up and say hey guys we're all really? here and, and my tech skills aren't that awesome, but we'll see, you know, we'll do the best, but, you know, love me for who I am kind of thing. If you're prepared to say that, others can't judge you on it. So, um, yeah, and I've done that with my, my VAs because you know, I'm great on the tech side of things. I love it. I love the troubleshooting. I love all of that. When it comes down to managing my inbox, that thing, 
I look at it and go, oh, I'll do that later. So I have a VA who goes through and she organises it. Everyone needs a gale in their life, but she'll organise it. She'll file everything. She'll make sure I've seen what needs to be actioned. She'll um, move things from the inbox into our ticketing system. She does all that. And I'm like, that's great because that's something I don't want to do. It's something I'm crap at doing. She's like, that's cool. This is what I do. You go do what you do. I'm going to make your life easier so you can go and do what you do. And she loves it. She thinks it's a great thing. Um, and that works incredibly well for, for me. And I've seen it work really well for others when they do it too. Yeah. Yeah. So it, I, I think... You know that that as we, we kind of started this out talking about that that reflection the other thing that that kind of uh, i'm not sure if it ties a ribbon around all that we've spoken about but it certainly um, is well worth us recognizing as individuals uh, our own growth as a leader as a communicator our own growth is a journey we, we don't get to the end of that. We don't get to, you know, there, there isn't a place called business owners all stop here, no more growth needed because there's actually always going to be this growth. And so that reflection and that self-leadership is, is this, this understanding that I too am on a journey. I might be um, at a at a different level to my new staff, I might be at a different level to that family member over there, um, but I am on a journey, and and it doesn't actually ever stop. I love that. I absolutely love that. Now, um, some of the things you were talking, or one of the things that you said you wanted to discuss and I know we've discussed most of these I well, a lot of these as we've gone through but uh, strategies we can just easily embed in our daily routines so what are some of the things that uh, if I when I get out of a bed in, in out of bed in the morning and I start my day what are some of the things that I could be doing to improve myself as a leader and take better self-leadership um, the first thing I think is to remember that um, you have the ability to choose the attitude that you put on first thing in the morning. I love that. No one can ever take that away from you. Doesn't matter what sort of situation you're in, how well the business is going, how poorly the business is going, how well well your family and your relationships are, or, or how how uh, roller coaster they are right now no one can take away that ability for you to choose so it's it's really about being quite deliberate and i'm sure charlie you've heard me say this before we talk about these concepts and everyone goes oh they're easy to understand oh yeah i could do that you have to be really deliberate and consistent about applying these things so you know that choice and choosing that attitude the other way that choice comes into it is this. We don't know what's going to happen to us, uh, what, our, what, our, what, our, um, what everyone in our personal or our private life, uh, a personal life or our working life, we don't know what interactions we're going to have every single day. We, we, we've got no control. That's completely out of our control. So we don't know what's going to be coming at us. We have the choice about how we respond to things. And that is where our power is. That is where our power is. Now, I was very deliberate there about using the word respond. Because responding is totally different from reacting yeah, and often when we react we're, we're in the emotion we're stressed we're frustrated we've had enough self-leadership and a strategy for you to embed daily is to I loved it before when you said breathe just take a moment to breathe if you need to ask for time out just say I just got to take a couple of breaths here 
Yep. Because when you take that pause and you respond, that is absolutely where your power is. Yep. Absolutely where your power is. None of this knee jerk stuff, get on and do it. The other thing, um, the other um, self leadership. Um, strategy that I think is really important is for you to recognize that you're not perfect and to stop giving yourself a hard time about that and or to stop having others think that you are perfect you know like like, like we go out there in the world we think oh we're perfect and when, when we let ourselves down, we give ourselves a hard time about it. But the flip side of that is that we think we're so damn perfect that we are um, almost arrogant to the people that we're coming in contact with. And they may be exactly the people that you need to support your business, whether they be a customer or whether they be an employee. I, you know, I think that, that being a little humble is useful, but also not giving yourself such a hard time if you don't get everything right every single time. You know, perfect is, it's an illusion. Um, you know, it's, it's a we, real... We all, have a fault. we all have our faults, yep. And I, I, I just wanted to just highlight there, it's just so important because I fall into the trap. I don't meet my, I said to it, I said earlier, I have really high standards. I have yeah. trouble meeting my sta own standards. Um, and it, it, this has been a lifelong battle for me, is <laughs> remembering that I have high standards and I can't always meet them. Because when I don't, you know what I do, right? I beat myself up. Oh, I didn't do it. And I'm such a failure and I'm so useless. Yeah. And I'm, and, and, if, if listen to the words that. I'm using. Listen to the words I'm using. If we dig down on that a little bit, what an awesome strength it is to have a high standard. It's, it's great fantastic. to have, it, it's awesome. There are so many positive things about it. And this is what I want to say to all of your listeners is it, when we overuse that strength, when we overuse that strength of having high standards, it sabotages us. And how does it sabotage us? First of all, we put, as Charlie has just said, this incredible pressure on ourselves. Yep. We give ourselves a hard time. We also set a bench so high that when we're bringing new staff in, we set them up to fail because they're never going to get there. As I said before, you don't go from a beginner to 20 years experience in two and a half hours, two and a half days, two and a half weeks or two and a half months. You know, that, like that people have to be traveling on a journey. You actually want your staff to learn from your mistakes so that they're not repeating them. But, but you know, that, so having those high standards is, yes, it's really awesome. If you overuse it, it impacts negatively on you and everyone in your circle so that's something to be really aware of all right look i'm just going to do a quick read here for uh my locals community and then we will be back to you okay uh so being a business owner can be tough being a business owner who works remotely can get lonely and frustrating as we're sort of discussing here today that's why I started my locals community, a community for business owners that could be a bit like the water cooler of old. Treat my local community as a place where you not only get to interact with me, but with each other. You can gain inspiration from others, provide inspiration and advice. And of course, as supporters, you'll be able to ask questions of myself. So come on over and join me at askcharlieletham.locals.com. I'm really looking forward to meeting you there. Back to us now. <laughs> there we go. Um, so, Beb, look, you've said some really wonderful things. I liked your strategies there about what we do when we get out of bed in the morning. I love the idea of we, we choose what 
um, attitude we take into the day. It's like putting on a jacket. What clothes are we going to wear today? Well, what attitude am I wearing into the day? Mm -hmm. um, I love the uh, concept of, you know, remembering you're not perfect. Uh, I'm actually going to add to that, I think, uh, practice humility in all of it. You might be really, really good at what you do, but humble practice. humility. Oh, yeah. Just, Humil just humility is an, 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 an awesome trait to have because, yeah, uh, that, and that, that would have been what I followed on with when I was saying earlier about, you know, this, this, this almost arrogance. Um, it's useful for you. It's useful for you to make a mistake because that reminds you, you know, how often with a sporting team or someone who, who plays plays a sport, it's useful for them to learn. They learn much more, to lose rather, they learn much more from the errors um, and from losing than, than they learn necessarily from winning. So, yeah, humility, love it. Yeah. Thank you. It is there is actually two things that um, I wanted to just add into that that whole conversation there. The first one is uh, something my dad said to me when I was very young and he often reminds me of it is show me a man who has made no mistakes and I will show you a man who has done nothing. Yeah. And the only way not to make a mistake is to do nothing and that's a terrible place to be. Uh, the second one is just a personal thing that I learned and it was actually my son that I learned it with. Uh, he brought home a math problem and he was having no end of problems. And this new math these kids are learning, oh my God, I don't get it. Um, but I struggled with math. It's, it's amazing, I'm a tech and I struggled with math. So I had to learn a whole heap of ways of doing things that got me through it. And he brought this home, he's like, Bleh. and I'm like, look, let me show you how to do it. And he goes, no, mum, they said I have to do it this way. So I let him go on it, I let him go on it. And he was getting more and more frustrated. And I finally said to him, may I show you how I do it? You might find something in there that you can use. And he was, I think, 14 at the time. And he looked at me and he went, yeah, okay. And I went through and I showed him. He goes, I'm doing it that way from now on. Now, I took out of that the whole, I know how to do this and I'm going to show you how to do it. It took me a little bit to why don't I show you something that maybe it'll work for you or maybe it doesn't. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to give it to you. And if you don't want it, that's fine. Throw it in the bin. I want to share something with you that I think will really help. I, you know, I need your help with this. Uh, are both great ways to come into the conversation when, when, you know, wanting to have that little tricky part of the conversation or that that tricky that tricky conversation about I, I need you to change what you're doing it's not working you know like, and and that leadership and communication is about understanding that there are all sorts of phrases there are all sorts of statements that we can make that are going to open the door for greater comp conversation just as you said there well you know may I show you how, how I might approach this and see if you can take something from it love it yeah and look honestly it was just a, it was just an eye-opening experience for me because it changed uh, it was really adversarial um at, to begin with you know I'm, your yep. kids are stubborn I love my kids to pieces but oh my goodness they're like their mother <laughs> and he was really stubborn. No, no, this is the way I've been. I've been told to do it, and I had to let him go. I had to just step back and take a breath and not take the pen from him, which I. This is what we do, um, and from then on, he's he, he used to come back to me and say, "Okay, mum, how would you do this? Can you can you help me here? I'm having trouble. How would you do this? Because." It wasn't me telling him, it was me showing him, it was me giving other options. Anyway, let's keep moving on that. Um, <laughs> out of everything we've discussed today, Beth, what is the one thing you would like listeners to take away with them? It's probably two, if you will, um, if you will allow me to, to do two. I will indulge you. <laughs> Um, thank you. One of them is that 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 superpower of, of 
of choice. Right? Make a decision. You can choose. No one can ta ever take that away from you. And that, the awesome thing is that when you make a decision, if it's not working, you can make another one. You can change it. You know, we, 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 we allow ourselves to get trapped around that a whole lot. Um, that, that's the first thing. And the second thing is leadership and self-leadership really begins with you. You, your, your, um, you know, you're at the scene of every experience, at every, as, at every disaster, at, at every positive interaction. You're at the scene of all of that. So I'd really encourage people to take some responsibility for, for reflecting on how am I leading here? How am I showing up here? How am I communicating here? And is it moving me towards the outcome that I'm looking for? That's very, very powerful. Thank you very much. Now, how can people get in touch with you and find out more about what you do? Um, they can contact me on on my uh, website, which is bethbergen.com. I'm also on both LinkedIn and Facebook um, and, and always on those as Beth Bergen and um, on Instagram as well. So if people want to connect, often through Messenger or whether it be on LinkedIn, Know, through through the private messages on LinkedIn or Facebook, great way to contact. Remind me that this is where um, you've heard me and, and that we have Charlie in common and uh, that will help me just to put some context around uh, how, what you're reaching out for. Fantastic. Thank you. And I will, as usual, guys, have all those contact details in the comments below or in the this, uh, show notes so that you can contact Beth straight from here. Uh, if you think you've picked up anything at all that's valuable or you want to know more, please get in touch with her. Uh, there's so much, so much gold in what she said today. Uh, okay, well, I think we are about done for the day. Thank you so much for your time. I'd like to remind people to, let me see if I get this right, like this video, subscribe to my channel and ring the notification bell so you do find out when I drop more content. And uh, if you're listening to this on any of the podcast platforms, leave a five-star review. That would be fantastic. I'd love that. Thank you so much. Uh, and apart from that, Beth, if you don't, do you have anything more you wanted to add before we close out today? Uh, just thank you, Charlie. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, I love to be here and, and, and these take advantage of every single opportunity I have to have conversations. I've enjoyed myself. Thank you. Oh, look, I'm glad you enjoyed yourself. I, I got a lot out of it. I enjoyed it as well. And, uh, guys, I will see you next week for whatever we're going to talk about. Talk to you all later.